Welcome back to the show. It is 445 and some. And some. We are so excited to have Dr. V on the line now with KTLA 5 Live as we are just about, oh, uh, 15 minutes out from five o'clock. Dr. V, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Hello. So you are a renowned relationship expert, a media personality, and you host a TV show on WeTV called Marriage Book, book mm -hmm. Camp, rather. Uh, mm -hmm. you, uh, you, have a, you have a book <laughs> called Bad Advice, How to Survive and Thrive in the Age of BS. And we are hoping that you can help us cut through all the BS and talk about how to survive in this new BS existence that is yeah. quarantining and pandemic uh, 101, a lot of times with significant others uh, or people now who mm. you cannot get away yeah. from. Yeah, no, that's that's for sure. I mean, some some of the issues that uh, have come up is how to reduce anxiety during this time. I mean, think about that. Hey, just calm down. It's only a pandemic. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. And because it is, my point is that a little anxiety can go a long way. It keeps you quarantined, social distancing, washing your hands 40 times a day, and checking the CDC website for updates. So fear and anxiety can work for us. What doesn't work for us is chronic anxiety. That will interfere with your daily life. It will feel unbearable. It will feel um, like you can't sleep, you can't eat, it'll affect your sexual drive, and you'll have reoccurring episodes of unprovoked feelings of impending doom, often accompanied by muscle pain, fatigue, headache, nausea, breathlessness. Yeah, and guess this what? honestly, you're describing basically my life even before all of yes. this happened. So now <laughs> that this is, this is going on, right. at least I have a justification for it. Uh, but what can we do though to keep our stress levels down or to, I guess, take a break from the impending doom? Such a great question. So I'm going to uh, break it down into uh, very concrete ideas. And then if we have more time, we'll dive into them and unpack them. So number one, um, you're going to take bre breaks from reading and listening to stories about COVID-19. Your mind is not a toxic waste dump. So don't pay attention to what you feed. So you need to pay attention to what you feed it. You don't want psychological indigestion. Um, hearing Ooh. or reading about a pandemic is incredibly upsetting, period. So, however, you can control how, where, and when you get this information. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Totally. Sure. Yeah, for us in the news media, that's basically impossible. I will continue being a toxic waste dump, but yes, for everybody else out there, yeah, we're definitely, absolutely. We're definitely using this as our own personal time yes. to- uh, Is there any kind of laxative I can take to just flush out all that toxic waste that I'm consuming daily? <laughs> No, it, it it really is. You know, you are you are probably the fourth or fifth team that I've spoken to about uh, this issue, and you know, the newscasters all say the same thing. So I want to just extend my empathy to you. Um, it's not easy to uh, be out there covering the same issues over and over and over again. So it it, it leads me to step two. Um, anxiety happens when we lose our presence in the present so what does that mean it means we're living in the future um and there's no better way to um live in the present than to connect with your body i know it sounds so simple but it is so easy to do it really does work taking deep breaths six seconds in six seconds out um it really does calm the mind and calm the body. And um, there's another uh, thing that I love that is, is, is incomparable. You know, when we say the word meditation, um, I don't know about you, but um, my, I have like, I, I roll myself into another universe. Like stop talking about meditation. It takes too much time. I can't sit <laughs> still, you know, wh wh whatever my excuses may be. Um, but there's now something that I feel has been made for every American called mini meditations. And you can find them everywhere. They're online, they're on Spotify, they're on iTunes. And what does that mean? What is a mini meditation? That is five minutes long. Five minutes Doctor, to I'm shift so your mind. 
I'm so glad you brought that up because I've been doing a lot of home workouts. I know Robert has been too. And at the end of a lot of programs, you have a five minute cool down. And a lot of the time, at least before doing this at home or before COVID-19, I'm like, oh, I'll just stretch when I get home and I leave the studio. Or, oh, I'll do it later. I don't need that. I'm taking those five minutes now. And I do believe mm. the mini meditation or the five minute cool down, however you want to put it, um, really does help. And I'm glad that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. It, you know, and when we talk about exercise, segueing into that, um, it really is house cleaning for the soul. And I know, I know it's annoying for our viewers out there to, like, oh my God, exercise. Um, but there is an instant benefit. And again, it's about time. Because when we think about these things, we get overwhelmed by the time it might take. Did you know that five minutes of aerobic activity can reduce your anxiety? jump rope in your living room create your own little workout of 30 sit-ups 10 push-ups 20 jumping jacks move your body and your mind shifts with it um and i know that these tips it's like again a, a big eye roll if you are feeling overwhelmed with anxiety and chronic anxiety do this it will be very very helpful and before you even get to that point these steps are so crucial into maintaining your mental health yeah um you know my my, my fourth tip is you know human beings are solar powered um go outside away from other people of course open your window feel the sun on your face the wind look up and watch the clouds um move your body and look at the world we are, are part of the universe this so you know so many times you know, um, we have a hard time we have a hard time accepting it. <laughs> i just want to listen to you tell me how good the world is going to be that's all i need but I just you keep, keep saying i'm not going to go exercise i'm not going to go outside i just want you to say how great those things are for me because that makes me feel better <laughs> But you know what, and it's what we're talking about for you specifically, Andrew, is is your future self. We're thinking about your future self. And when we think, think hopefully of our future self, it helps calm our anxieties because our anxieties are beneficial. They help us. Um, you I know, like a little angle. anxiety yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. It's so a, a like we, we are meant to have yeah and and i yeah and, we're and meant I, to have anxiety i and i i totally understand that I, obviously being flippant but i think that you know these are simple things but they absolutely um you know they absolutely do work and she's talking about going outside but one of the notes that i wanted to mention is staying inside for those of us who um are quarantined with a significant other you have some tips on how to stay romantic when you can't leave the house well, I mean, look, um, my husband and I, we FaceTime from other parts of the house now, just oh to keep God. it exciting. Wow. <laughs> so we're getting creative. <laughs> There's all different ways to stay. That's so funny. There's no. all different ways to stay. Well, um, one of the questions that we see in our group, too, is like, how do you get along with your spouse, your family, when you have to be in the same house with them for now another month, potentially? No matter how much you love somebody, Kellyanne Capaluto, who's one of our viewers, says spending every minute confined to home is going to test you. What do you do? That is very true. Um, you need to create a schedule for yourself. It's, in, it's imperative. And you need to have that conversation with everyone in your family to come to an agreement about what does this look like for the next 30 days? For the next, who knows, maybe even 60 days. What does this look like? Um, so, for example, in, in, in my home, um, I set a new rule yesterday. And I got to my wit's end. So it took me 16 or 17 days of, of complete quarantine <laughs> with my crazy Italian family oh, to get to my wit's end. So I feel I, I'm ahead of it. <laughs> so I, I set a rule of like, okay, no one is allowed in the common areas from 10 until 3 because that is working hours for now that is working hours because i just couldn't take the noise right so you're going to have to set some boundaries 
you're going to have to understand what your own limitations are, and you're going to have to have this conversation. Um, now, what I do, um, I go out to the car for peace and quiet, and I just sit there. That's great. So anything can work okay, when you're car in car time. To- <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, that, so those I, are all, I, all very whatever, helpful. Whatever works for you and for your family what's most important is the communication so this is a really good time to sharpen our communication skills with our family so so far um, again I'm from a big Italian family no one has uh, attempted to kill anyone so that's good um, we're again ahead of the curve and and all this is because of, of good communication right really being able to talk to one another and really being able to discuss what it is that's bothering us in that moment oh, or, Italians or, or have or no problem sharing what's <laughs> bothering them with the other <laughs> so no exactly. that. one exactly. more question from our Facebook group Kristen Metzinger says she's in college she's in her late uh, let me see she's in her mid 40s and totally has ADD it's hard for a lot of people not only in college but working from home to actually focus on the job would you also say yeah. that creating that physical boundary is part of focusing for work or school Well, absolutely. I mean, look, we're all, if we're lucky enough to be working from home, right? Um, You have to set up your own work schedule. So someone with ADD or ADHD is going to have to work extra hard to set up those boundaries, to set up that schedule and adhere to that schedule. So what you could do for yourself is give yourself a little treat after you adhere to your schedule. I mean, we live in California. I mean, there's lots of treats. There's nothing like a good puff of weed. I mean, come on. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) We got this. Yeah, you're absolutely Robert's right. has been treating himself quite often in that yeah, case. Even before <laughs> the <laughs> pandemic, he's been treating himself. Um, no, how, I think that's, I mean, how lucky are we to live in this state where I think about marijuana that, is legal at this time? Uh, not, I mean, that, it's like, I think about how lucky we are that it's like we've got sunshine. Uh, you know, there's not, it's not been that rainy or that cold compared to the rest of the country who's having to do this, uh, you know, in sometimes very yeah. inclement weather. So taking a walk around is something that's easy for us to do. But um, I think we are unfortunately out of time. But thank you so much for for, uh, hanging out with us. Oh, this was so fun. That, Thank you. That was uh, Dr. Venus Nicolini, best known as Dr. V. Uh, you can find her, uh, just Google it. Dr. Venus Nicolini. <laughs> She's got books. She's yeah, on TV. Just Google me. I'm Hope, there. Where can where we find you, prefer, you on, yeah. Uh, yeah, what are your preferred Instagram <laughs> handle, Twitter, Facebook? What would you like? Um, Dr. V, D O C T O R underscore V underscore. And that's my Instagram handle. And that'll lead you everywhere else you need to go. Love it. Thank you so much. Please uh, come back again. We have more news coming up and more to help you stay sane here on Five Live. Keep watching. Can we keep her on? I have a couple questions.